<laughs> I'm Jen Kanegi, and what do I do for fun? Uh, we watch Netflix documentaries and look up vegan recipes after we freak out, after, you know, watching What the Health and Cowspiracy. Um, we like to do art and paint and coach volleyball and photography. I really enjoy photography and taking pictures of the kids' events. Um, show dogs. We have a 4-H dog this year, so... Kid, kid, kid things. That's what. Just jumping into politics a little bit, what's the biggest problem facing America today? In politics? Maybe in general. It doesn't have to be political. Probably big money. Big money in politics is, I think, the big, I think that's a bigger terrorism in the United States than ISIS, the threat of ISIS is right now. Um, and then just the apathy, just people, they don't care, they don't think it affects them. And then we have, right here in Ohio, we have over 600,000 people that could be kicked off of Medicaid, and those people are gonna be affected. I think people just not caring about politics, or they think their vote doesn't count, I think that's a huge threat to politics in America right now, too. People have to get involved and they have to be engaged. What steps do we need to take to reclaim our country? Oh, wow. Well, getting money out of politics. Um, I think we need to break up the two-party system. I think when you have, and I have to give the Republicans credit because they let the rise of Trump happen. Mm -hmm. The Democrats did not let the rise of Bernie Sanders happen. Right. So um, I would love to see a party draft Bernie. Um, I don't know if it will happen in my lifetime. Hopefully it'll happen in her lifetime. Mm -hmm. You want to see Sanders? A president-esque like Sanders? Mm -hmm. Why? Because I think he would be good for schooling and stuff like that. For education? Yes, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, so. And I, I think we need to educate parents. And and they'll want to be engaged and fight back for their kids and and become involved. So um, why did you decide to run for city council? Uh, well, that probably starts with my initial trip down the rabbit hole. Um, she is a straight A student, very good student, smart, we're very lucky. She loves to read and she was coming home just having meltdowns on the counter, crying, didn't want to do this homework. So I did some research and I found out about Common Core, then I found out about who funds that, and then who was going to profit off of that and the charter schools. And then I started digging a little bit further into politics, and then Bernie Sanders came along. And then we flew to Madison, and I was like, who is this old guy that's like drawing all these young kids? And we heard him speak, and I was just literally in tears. Um, she was standing on a chair, chanting "Feel the burn" with all these college kids. I mean, it was it was amazing. And his message was, "Stand up and get involved." And I, I've never really thought, "Oh my God, I just have this burning desire to have to spend every Monday with these other people, half of whom I don't agree with politically," but. We left our school district in December. Um, they couldn't pass a levy, and there were kids literally taking notes on a windowsill because they didn't have a desk. And I said, we're not gonna go through this. She wants to be a veterinarian. So we are lucky enough to have good jobs to be able to pick up and move. So we did, and uh, we moved to Granville School District. And I thought, oh, maybe, Maybe I'll run for a school board. Maybe I'll get involved, because I did run for Licking Heights School Board. Um, so maybe I'll get involved. And actually, we knocked doors over here for Joe Begany, not in our development, but in my ward. When you get kind of down over off the hill, uh, we hit doors where people didn't have glass in their window. They had plastic. And the cars are up on blocks 
which coincidentally, there was one car up on blocks that had Obama bumper stickers on it. And I thought, oof, that isn't the definition of neoliberalism. I don't know what is. Um, because you because you feel like they're poor. Oh, yeah. And they're still supporting yeah. Democrats that are supposed to be working for mm -hmm. them. Yeah. So um, we have a very interesting demographic in my ward. Over here, I live with judges and attorneys, and then you come down off the hill and you get over into probably, this is a newer, I think they built this in 2000. So probably over in the 40s and 50s when they built those houses, and even back in the 20s, they made um, electric train cars here in Newark. So they built all these little small type Sears and Robux houses, I guess, I don't know. But um, those people, I think we read a report where the median salary is like 19000 for a single male. So it's very different. And we see people that look like they're homeless. I mean, we have panhandlers over here. And I just said, you know, I Granville, they get funding. They're a good district. They're, they don't need somebody to stand up and fight. These people over here in Newark need somebody to stand up and fight. So... That's why we said, okay, we're gonna go for city council. Let's play word association. I'm just going to name a word and you just say the first thing that pops in your head. Okay. Cat. Maine Coon. Dog. Batman. DNC. Oh, corruption. Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Killed Seth Rich. <laughs> Pancakes. <laughs> Syrup. Hillary Clinton. Oh, God. Donald Trump. Football. Bernie Kosar. Beer. John. Jill Stein. Uh, weak Sauce, Green Party. 80s TV sitcoms. Oh boy. Mark and Mindy. Tossie Gabbard. Mm, 2020 maybe. Nina Turner. Uh, my preacher, my soul, my soul preacher. Do you feel that America is a democracy? No. I think America is an oligarchy. I think we are run by the Koch brothers, the Heritage Foundation, and anybody who has enough money to buy our politicians. Do you feel that your government represents you? No. <laughs> My government most certainly does not represent me. Maybe if I lived in the great state of Vermont, but I don't like snow, so we can't move there. But our government definitely does not represent us. Do you recall the first time when you began to realize that your government didn't represent you? The first time I realized my government did not represent me was when my kids started having meltdowns doing her homework. And I realized that Common Core was in part belonged to some of the Bush family, belonged to some of the Hillary Clinton family, and they had just created this John Kasich here in Ohio Wild Wild West of Charters. Um, I, I think if I hadn't become a mom, I'd be sitting on my days off watching flip or flop on the TV. So, and we've talked about this, people don't think they're affected until they become affected. And then they wanna know, why is my kid not have a desk in their school? Why is my kid having meltdowns? Why don't we have textbooks anymore? We don't have textbooks, they have consumables. Why do we have consumables? Because people make money, because people are writing tests, and now they have to take tests for 30 some days out of the year. So we didn't do that. So I, I think that's when I decided we had no representation. Bernie Sanders wake you up? Oh. <laughs> I, I, was, I was on snooze. I knew something was up because of the education. But when we went to his rally in Madison, that's really when I was like, oh my God. Because we, 
We never went to an Obama rally, but we supported him. We voted for him for both of his terms. And I look back now knowing what Bernie has taught us. And I think he promised to label the GMOs. He promised to do this. He promised to help with the education. He promised, you know, to punish the bankers and not allow a big short to happen again. And it didn't happen. And I just, I look back at his campaign promises and I'm like, never again. I will go right to the money trail and see who's what and that's that will be our purity test. You're woke now, right? We're very woke. <laughs> Are you woke? Mm -hmm. You're woke more at 12 than I was at 40. Well, I, think, I think that's the number one thing that keeps me encouraged. Mm -hmm. my, my children are, are white and they see it. And every one yep. of my friends, they see it. So when I see Bernie Sanders, what are the first things that come to mind? One word, one, word, one word answer. That I can't read that. First thing that comes to mind, Bernie Sanders. First thing that comes to mind when I hear Bernie Sanders would be integrity, honesty, 50 years of fighting what we want to fight. Um, just undying dedication and devotion to his constituents. I mean, he stood up against, what, 98 other people and voted no against Russian sanctions. I mean, who has the balls to do that? I mean, literally, somebody who's unbought and uncorrupted. So that's that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. One of the first words that come to mind when you hear Bernie Sanders? Um, amazing and awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. You get so many straight A's that even your adjectives start with A. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And did you do any campaigning for Bernie Sanders? And if so, oh. um, tell me a little bit about what that was like. We did some campaigning for Bernie. Um, we lived in Pataskala, which is about, it was about a 50 minute drive into the Columbus office. Um, but we were there, we helped set up the office. We drove around a U-Haul that we rented to get furniture and get the, the office set up. Um, Olivia shredded papers and vacuumed about every night. We cooked food and Kevin O'Keefe was, I'm sure his diet wasn't grateful, but he was very grateful for the chicken and noodles and the beef and noodles that we took in. Um, we knocked doors. We had a couple uh, like little satellites that we launched out of the back of my car. One was in the pouring down rain with Ashley and her family and Dalton was there. Um, we have quite the Bernie group out here in Licking County that have stayed together. And we have a chat on Facebook. So we kind of, at least every couple of days. Um, and then Daniel Crawford has a progressive group out here. He campaigned. So even a lot of folks out here in the rural part of Ohio, um, we campaigned, knocked doors. We had a, we had a retired, Dave, we had a retired Massachusetts House of Representative person come in to Columbus. And we had a really strong group there and they're still fighting. They kind of branched out into Yes We Can and they're fighting for seats on city council. But so we kind of all drew in there together and we've since kind of branched back out and went home. But we had this sitting retired guy come in on a Greyhound bus, no suitcase, no, not, not even his medicine. He had to be in his late seventies. He, he didn't have anywhere to stay. So he kind of went with one group and they were younger. The girl was and he fell and kind of was bleeding and they knew I was a nurse. So we got Dave for a couple days. Um, Dalton took him for the first night cause I had workers, Bernie's data people up in our bonus room. But we took Dave and we spent a couple days with him. He was pretty amazing. Um, he was door knocking. He peed on somebody's pine tree. I'm like, Dave, you cannot, dude, you'll get arrested in Ohio for that. You can't be peeing on somebody's tree. But we had, that was probably the most fun couple of months, really. And we have just made friends that we're still friends with today. And Tell me about the satellites 
what would, what were these? Um, like we would get packets from the office. Mm -hmm. So we kind of, I wanted to make my house a satellite office. Okay. Um, that didn't, that didn't really work out because people were more east even. Mm -hmm. And we tried um, spending some time at the Democratic office here because our actual county had, they have an office right down the road here. That didn't work out. People just, they felt like it was too, I don't want to say unwelcoming because our county chair was great. She gave us a space. You know, she didn't charge us anything. She said, anytime you, you know, you want to come here and meet, you can have these days. But people just didn't feel like they were welcome. They didn't, there was just like an unspoken vibe. And we felt it again at the convention. So, um, so my car became a satellite. So we just had clipboards and packets and met people. Awesome. And the turf wasn't great. If the turf wasn't great, I went home and recut it. And then we read, we, we redid the turf. <laughs>
that if they want to beat Trump, but like Bernie says, they'll be on the Titanic as long as they're in the first class seat going down. So we'll, we'll see what'll happen. Describe uh, for me today what your day was like the day that Bernie Sanders endorsed Hillary Clinton. Oh, God. So this is crazy because it's like watching the space shuttle explode. I remember I was in class. So I, I knew exactly what I was doing. So the day Bernie endorsed Hillary, Olivia and I were sitting on the bed watching the TV and just in disbelief. Did you cry? Because I think I was welling up. I, I just... <laughs> I just, you know, that was just like a knife right, right through the gut. Not like, do it through the heart so it'll be faster, but it was just like, it was not good. Did you understand why he was doing Oh, it? oh yeah, yeah. He probably more quickly than other people. I mean, I knew he didn't want to be the Ralph Nader. He didn't, he, they would have fricasseed him. And they still are. I mean, I just saw one of my friends on Facebook posted something under, I didn't even know Hillary had a Facebook page, okay. But she has this Facebook page. And so she posts about the what happened. <laughs> so there was a post about this what happened book. And one of my friends commented, and I'm like, let me just go on and see. Just let me scroll. Okay, it was about two seconds of reading Bernie, the Bernie bots, they all, they caused Donald Trump. They, Jill Stein, go on and on. So I had to block it. I did. I just blocked the whole thing. I'm just like, I can't, I can't read it. I just, I can't even, couldn't deal. Do you believe, do you believe that we are responsible for Donald Trump? No, absolutely not. No. I, so well, let's, the whole Jill Stein argument in my county, alone. The write-in candidate, of course you don't know who it is, the write-in candidate got more votes than Jill Stein. So I don't think Jill Stein was the... Do you think the write-in candidate was almost always Bernie? Well, I know several who did write him in. Like Jill Stein got 60-ish votes and the write-in candidate had almost 90 votes. So um, I don't know, but I... To, Many, many of the Bernie people turned around and worked for Hillary. Now, I couldn't. I just, I couldn't knock a door. I knocked doors for the local candidates, absolutely. But I just, after she said what she said about charter schools and, you know, she was going to close down public schools, I, I just, I couldn't. That's my hot button, so... When you think about politics in America right now, are you angry, sad, encouraged, inspired? <sighs> Probably a, a mishmash of everything. I think um, frustrated because we are not seeing change with the DNC. We just saw Nina Turner on, forced on the other side of barricades, what, last week, trying to deliver a petition. Um, so again, there's that unwelcoming vibe and she has a title and they're treating her like that. So what are they gonna, how are they gonna treat us if we show up and, and we're like, hey, you know, we wanna be a part of the party. Um, frustrated because of Bernie and the, what they did and still continue to do, like the comments on Facebook. It's just like, when, when will it end? Like, stop, when's everybody gonna come together? Um, angry still, especially when you're time hop pops up and you're reminded of what happened at the convention last year. A lot of those angry feelings come back. Um, hopefully encouraged because so many of us are stepping up to run and and these kids, these kids, your kids, Mike, I mean, 
These kids are the Jeremy Corbyn, Bernie Sanders generation. They are going to be hopefully not devout socialist, but they are going to be more concerned with the social programs and the the min minorities that have been kicked out of the military or, you know, shot trying to protect their water or, you know, people in Flint that still don't have water. Hopefully our kids are the ones that are going to make sure that the social programs are taken care of and hopefully end the wars. I mean, if we could stop funding the wars, we could have a decent social safety net around here, have some health care. So... If um, the Democrats decide to run another corporate candidate like Kamala Harris <laughs> or Cory Booker in 2020, are you prepared for four more years of Donald Trump? No, I'm not. I, every day, I'm like, I'm going to have to get on a nerve pill because every day he does something stupider. But I, like, I'm like, he can't do anything. and He cannot do anything more ridiculous than he's done. And then you open up your Facebook, he's banned transgenders out of the military. I'm like, oh my God. Like literally every day. And then you've got, you know, the lang the potty language that's going on with this new White House guy. I'm like, now the kids can't even turn on the TV because we've got, I don't even know what we've, we've got some kind of MTV for mature audiences on our CNN, MSNBC, and Fox. You can't, you can't even turn on the TV now. So I'm not prepared for four more years of him, but I'm not prepared for another eight years of neoliberal bullcrap, drop bombs in seven countries and not take care of our people here either. So... So sells a, sells a Prozac. <laughs> well, or, or Jeremy Corbyn gets elected. I'm like, they're going to need some dialysis nurses over there because he's going to fund their national health care. Whoop. The hardest part would be to get the dogs in there, I think. But I, I just, I look at this country and just think, oh, my God, what are we leaving for our kids? And my grandma, she's like 89 now. And she had a Hillary sticker on her door. And um, we went and we talked about Bernie. Cause she only watches the TV. She doesn't do right. social media. Right. She doesn't email. She doesn't even text. So we started talking to her about Bernie. And Olivia got her talking about Bernie. And so she scraped off her Hillary sticker and put the Bernie sticker up. And she said, Jen, he's like FDR. She's like, these are the same. You know, this is how we got out of the Great Depression. And so I think my family has always instilled, even if you are the first to graduate from college out of your family and you get a good career and you settle down with somebody who has a great career, you don't just go buy a big house up on a hill. You have to keep giving back because we're the ones who give a shit about the people at the bottom of the hill. And we're the ones who can reach back and give them a hand and raise them up. And I hate that whole bootstraps thing. I'm like, if somebody can't even afford a pair of boots, how are they going to pull up their bootstraps? So um, there's a little poverty think tank here that are doing great things. And I, I just think it's important for me to say, yeah, I am the first person that graduated from college and yeah, I have a good career, but I'm gonna take some of that money and I'm gonna give back and we're gonna help less fortunate people. And hopefully she gets through college and then she reaches back and helps those people up. So she's got a good start.